right, here we are. The Comixology Amazon merger is formally, officially happening. And this week, as of recording this video, the Comixology 4.0 app update came out. There was a string of tweets about pending changes and them going ahead with the execution of the merger and what the new Comixology experience and such was going to be. And a few days later now, we, we have the app update. So I've done the update, played around with this a little bit and kind of want to give an overview, review of what's new, what's different, how it works, what's missing, uh, what's not really that great, or spent a day or so messing with it, uh, looked at some books, uh, been all around the app. For reference, uh, we're looking here at my 2018 iPad Pro 11 inch. Uh, I've had this for a while. It's it, amongst the many things that I do use my iPad for, reading and particularly comic book reading is one of my, my key use cases. So right away, um, I haven't done anything essentially but launch the app. And so this is the opening screen, it takes you right to your library and you can see right away we're already missing, uh, missing some things. We have a library and we have a discover tab. There's no more options for, and like the landing page kind of, that used to exist in the Comixology app. You just go straight up to this library view. And that means no smart lists and in, in some of the other things that were presented kind of on that on that landing page. So right off the bat, a little bit of a bummer and loss of, of functionalities. So let's just go kind of from top to bottom, of course. And if I start searching for, say, Spider-Man, you can see it does search as I type. So typing for uh, so searching for Spider M uh, eliminated sh uh, the showing up of Spider W for Spider Woman. One of the other things that I've noticed is the way the searching works in the in Comicsology at prior. Like if I was searching for Star Wars, I would get Rising Stars or I would get Other Wars. But now if I search for Star Wars, if I search for Star Wars without mistyping. I see Star Wars. So it's not like partial matching individual words and whatnot of the string anymore. It What you're typing is essentially a full match. But as I also typed there with Spider-Man, I didn't use the hyphen and it still found Spider-Man. So it, it's it's ignoring some characters in the search. It's, it's not partial matching. I actually prefer this. I don't want to see rising stars when I type Star Wars. I want to see Star Wars. So I think in all in all, that's a, that's an improvement. You can see it, it takes a little bit of time. It's not the fastest thing. And granted, this iPad is a 2018 model. However, it's it's an iPad Pro. And so this thing should be able to rip through rendering and visualizations and so on. And I find I found the performance to be lacking a bit. I'm curious maybe how this would run on a Apple Silicon, uh, Apple Silicon iPad Pro versus this older version. So on the upper right here, we have a little combo icon. There's like a person, a heart, uh, a question mark and such. This is basically settings and some other options. We see my account, my list, settings, help, feedback, and about. If I go into account, I can see the registration. It's registered to my name. This is my iPad. There's some options to merge account, sign out, and force a sync. Not really a whole lot. So if we look at lists, now this is tied to your Amazon wish list. And you can actually get to, if I click this, it pulls up all of the wish lists that are active on my Amazon account. So I can put Comixology Comics now into Amazon wish lists because it's all one linked store. And I started a Comixology wish list. That's the one that opened here by default. I just named it Comixology. I had put a couple of Star Wars, Darth Vader graphic novel volumes from the most recent series in there. And so you can get a get a visualization of what this looks like. See more doesn't show anything in this case because I had only added the three books, but these are pretty big um, and it gives you the ability to look at the item. I can click to remove and I can click in to go to the discover section, get information about the book, download a sample and read reviews. There's also a heart here that I can use to, it looks like a separate favorite, but technically the heart is how you the heart is how you put something in a wish list and it can add it to an existing list or create a new list oddly i already have this in a list the heart isn't filled in i would have expected to see 
the, a solid heart for something that's already in a wish list while still giving me potentially the option to add it to multiple lists if I wanted to maintain them that way. So that's lists, settings, again, not a whole lot here at all. Whisper Sync, which is the Amazon syncing system for read progress and so on. Of course, if you're in the ecosystem, you'd want that on, I would think. And then data and storage usage, basically download using cellular is on. Help loads this context menu that you can click through to get help with certain aspects of the app. Send us feedback, goes to a feedback form. Definitely, I have sent plenty of feedback into Comixology over the years. And then finally, the about version and some external links, legal notices, and such. So that's settings, wish lists, all kind of mushed together under that one menu there. So the remainder here is basically my library. And we can see there's some really neat things, actually, in upgrades, I think, that they made in terms of how the library presents itself, which is pretty cool. If we go over the banner, this first banner here though, first option is the filter. So I can get right away to downloaded books or uncheck that to see all the books in my library. And again, you're getting a view of how quickly it renders the library and such. And I have a pretty big Comixology library. As you can see, books, 8,800 uh, total issues in Comixology. Many, many single issues, many, many graphic novels and such. Um, I have read and unread basically read about half of that library. I can get to it in progress. So that's nice. That was formerly kind of on the homepage launching the app. If you want to pick up books that are in progress, having that quick quick filter, a uh, nice spot to go to. And, and, and it's like downloaded. So you can kind of check multiples of these on at the same time, which is good for a filter setting. Find my downloaded issues in progress or just find any of my issues in progress or filter everything off to see the entire library. And there is an option here for prime reading. So I'm not a Comixology Unlimited subscriber. If I go back to, to actually using Comixology more, I probably will subscribe. I think it's a good value. But I'll touch on that in some other in another video, actually. I want to follow up this video with a deeper talk about the, the pros and cons and concepts of using a subscription service versus kind of buying a la carte in the different comic platforms that are available to us right now. So I presume that if I were a Comixology Unlimited subscriber, I would also have the option to filter for those books. But given I, I am a member of Prime Reading, I can see that. But my Prime Reading access is zero. I get this, again, I guess because I'm an Amazon Prime customer in general. But I don't even have any, I don't even have any books. I think the way Prime Reading works is you have to like check them out into your account and then they would show up in this list here. Sorting, I can group by series or not. So you can see it jumped from coalescing books uh, from the same series together versus not. I generally prefer the series view. I can go from a grid view to a list view if you want to see more information about the individual items and creators and, and, so, and such. And notice like, right, we've got some some jankiness there where covers weren't loading until I scrolled off of the screen and came back. Keep that in your mind because you're going to see that in some other places as well. So I generally use the grid view and then we can sort by recently accessed slash purchased title author or publication date. So one aspect actually maybe worth noting about the, the jump lettering here is when I sort by something alphabetical, title, author, the letter jump list retains so that you can kind of jump through fairly quickly. If I pick something like recent, where it wouldn't make sense to jump to an alphabetical position that goes away, if I go by publication date, same thing, no quick jump. That's actually pretty smart. See that, that controls that are irrelevant to a certain um, mode of presentation disappear when they're not relevant and then they come back when they are. So one other thing that you can do, which I think is really, really nice, actually I really like this feature, is I can pinch, I'm um, actually, I'm at the maximum. So I can pinch to zoom in to show more books or out to show less books. And I found that the, the maximum zoom in gets you basically six, six per row. And it goes kind of one, it's a little touchy, honestly. So there's five, four, three, two, 
and that's that's as big as it gets. It might be a little hard to resolve, but one of the things I haven't been impressed with is the book quality. I'll touch on that more specifically, but as you zoom in here, the covers, they don't look really great, quite honestly. I think you need to get to the at least three wide, yes, not very, very responsive, at least four wide before the covers start to look like kind of more to their maximum sharpness. I was kind of preferring as I was using it, the, the five wide, five or six wide option. And something else to point out here, you can see it, it's not, there we go, okay. Um, is I, I do like how things are presented. We see counts for the number of items that are basically in that series. We see red tags, if everything that's under that banner or under that series has been red versus uh, there is no banner on the series if there are items inside that are unread. We can see the details. If it's an individual issue here, we see like Adventure Comics number 247. If it's multiple issues put together in a series, then we get the series name and the dates potentially where applicable. If I zoom, or I'm sorry, if I scroll through here, it's not bad. You can see it rendering it just, but it doesn't feel silky smooth. And I'll be very eager in a future iPad upgrade to see if that improves. Comixology is I've upgraded iPads over the years. I've been a user of the iPad since the version one of it came out and I've had quite a few of them um, upgrading as they've gotten better. Comixology is the type of app that generally benefits from having the latest Apple hardware, the latest iPad hardware because the processors are stronger and the smoothing is scroller and everything just kind of works better in those regards. But still, this is a 2018 model, a very, very fast iPad Pro. Like this should be just absolutely silky smooth, ultra quick rendering of covers and, and it's not always like that. So if we go into a series, say, one other thing that I like very much is kind of the subdivision that's in here. The Comixology app didn't do this before, uh, but right off the bat, um, notice notice the jankiness. Our covers haven't loaded. If I scroll down, I see some covers, and if I scroll back up, now that one has appeared, and I can't get I can't get these volumes to show up because the trick to getting them to show up is to get them off the screen, get the entire render box off the screen, and then bring it back on the screen so that it like forces a redraw. But I see this a lot, particularly in the volumes section of going into a series. So that's a bug, they need to stomp that one right away. Um, but what I was referring to is this, in terms of the subdivision is notice in this, in this series, Action Comics, the 2016 series, I actually own what they termed as an omnibus. I own nine uh, collected edition volumes. And I also own some single issues. I, I don't, I don't know why I bought everything this way, different issues at different times or whatnot, but I like not having them together. I like being able to see the collected editions separate from the individual issues. I think that's really nice. And there's also on, on a series page when it renders, you have the option here t telling me I have 13 items in the series. If I wanna view all items, I can do that and it'll shoot me over to the discover page and I can see more that's available in the series. This is not very navigatable, bit really big. These covers, you can't change the zoom level to really get through a lot of them. At least they still continue to subdivide. So here I have issues, volumes, and omnibuses. Of course, you can't purchase in here because they're not gonna pay Apple the requisite cut. So your, your best option, if you were browsing something you wanted to read actually in the app on the iPad, you would favorite it to, or add it to a wish list, and then you'd be able to access that wish list on a computer and make your purchase. So let's take a look through a couple more options. So you see in this case, all new Wolverine, I only have volumes. I don't have any single issues. And if you don't have different categories of items within a series, you don't get the category separation. I guess that's kind of nice. I mean, they could have still had it say volumes or single issues or whatever, but if I guess if you only have one type of entity in a given series, you don't need the subdivision, so that works fine. 
Let me try and look for another example where the volumes didn't load. Yeah, so I think I might have accessed a lot of these once already. Maybe that's the maybe that's the trick. So we're getting some better response. But when I was first using this after upgrading, I had a, a lot more cases where the collected edition, the omnibuses or the volumes were showing the gray. And again, I found the solution to that was to the need to scroll down to resolve it and scroll it back up. But it seems to be working better. Maybe I've, I've loaded more of those. Um, I did notice some sorting issues, some, some sorting bugs right away too, or, or basically some uh, coalescing bugs. These Batman volumes, for example, the Snyder Batman 2011 to 2016 run there. It was it had a separate entry for the volumes and the single issues. That was kind of confusing. It's rare, uh, but my library is pretty large. I'm going to scroll through here really quick to get to it. You can see some things like Elephant Men, for example, isn't being coalesced into a series. So you have all of these individual issues, kind of a pain. That's more of the exception, thankfully, than the norm. I think they've got some metadata cleanup in that to do to really get it working the way it's supposed to and have everything show up the way it's supposed to. Now, I do have options. If I hold on a series, I have the option to remove series from device. All that will do is if you have anything in that series downloaded, it's a local delete. It's just it's removing the downloaded copy or I can choose to download all series content with a single click. If I do view all items in the series, that actually takes me to the discover versus just tapping on the series actually takes me into the series. If I do this on a single issue, I get a few more options. I can see book details, which takes me to the discover page. I can mark as unread or mark as read. I can recommend, I can choose to download, I can permanently delete. And I have done this actually for a couple items to see how it worked. This is full on account level content deletion. If you do permanently delete, that book is gone, uh, not to be downloaded again. If you decide you want it, you will, re you will have to repurchase it. Now, one of the great things about Comixology that I found as a service is the ability to archive. And per the tweets, uh, that's another one of the, the main, really nice features of the platform that's been lost in this transition. Uh, I believe they indicated a potential desire to bring it back or something like it, if I remember what they said. And then I also have the option here, select multiple items. So I can tick, tick, tick. And I have actions up here after doing multiple items, which is not working. Let's try this again. Select multiple items, let's just try two. Maybe it's because I selected individual issues and a series and I can't have the same action. So I can mark as read or download selected with multiple things, multiple items selected at the same time. I don't see any facility to like tap and hold and swipe to select. So if you wanna select multiple items, you're going to tap, tap, tap on every individual one. And let's say you had like a 50 issue series that you really decide you no longer want or you decided to pick up the digital omnibus and you don't want these single issues anymore. If you wanted to permanently delete a large quantity of stuff, you're gonna be in for a lot of clicking. There's no facility to multi-select and permanently delete. You have to permanently delete one by one by one. So something else to point out down here is the this book cover is essentially the last thing that you were reading. I think this was inspired by more recent versions of the Kindle uh, ebook app where they, they take your current book and it goes down there into the middle. I, I wish that was a, an option, honestly. I don't like seeing that over kind of shadowing what I'm looking at for the covers in the view. Um, I guess it's usable. You, you come into the app very quickly and you want to jump back into the same exact thing that you were reading before. It does make it quick, although, again, you could always filter, just jump into your currently reading or leave the filter setting on your currently reading. But in any case, let's go into Wolverine and let's see one of the major, major failings of the new app. Extremely disappointing. So, if you, if you look on my channel, I think I'm going to set up like a playlist for digital comics or digital reading. But I did a comparison of when, when the Comixology and the Kindle stuff 
first starting to happen or first really announced a few months back, I did a comparison and kind of an overview, and I looked at some of the book quality, uh, specifically with this book, Wolverine, the old Frank Miller miniseries, issue number two. And I was looking at the book on Marvel Unlimited, Comixology, and the Kindle app itself. And the Kindle app looked terrible. The Comixology looked very nice. And Marvel Unlimited looked looked pretty nice. I think just about as good, almost as good as the uh, Comixology version. Well, they've wrecked it. And this looks like the Kindle version of the book. And I've noticed that through a variety of, of books that I've looked at in here. So I guess in, in this whole transition, unfortunately, does that mean that we, we say goodbye to Comixology HD quality and high quality books and we're going to be stuck with the Kindle level quality? If so, it's really terrible. You can see here the ringing around like the blue is not a solid blue around like Wolverine's fingers up here around the claws. The Marvel Comics banner and such at the top just it looks fuzzy. This is a really good, I think this book is a really good test for quality because you have like basically blue and some gradients and such with bad compression and a bad scan or whatever, whatever it was, it just, it really exacerbates it not looking great. And this looks terrible. This book in the Comixology app before was solid, clean, really nice to look at. And so this, this is very disappointing. If this whole transition means that the Comixology, formerly provided Comixology scans of our books is gone, and now it's replaced with the Kindle versions, and that's what they're gonna do going forward, that's just really a shame. In any case, I can still swipe across, I can tap to page forward and back, I can tap in the middle, um, and this part of the reader, I would say, has actually improved. It's, it's very Kindle-esque. This is really taken from the way Kindle eBooks work. So I can quick zoom through pages and notice as soon as I did that, it popped this little option here to go back to the page that I was formerly on. Like a quick jump, I can grab and swipe through on the bottom bar. And then I've got, you know, it's tagging five and it's tagging 14 as like the last place I read and then my furthest place that I read. Gives me my location in terms of page number, 8 of 22, and a percentage. I have a page spread here that I can scroll between, and my back to 5 pops up there. I can jump to a specific page. And then I have other options. This is how I go back or exit the book, that little down arrow. Let's jump right back in. I can see a Kindle-esque, ebook-esque book details about this book, cover, jump to the cover, jump to the beginning, jump to a location, sync. I have options to read, uh, guided view controls. I don't tend to read in guided view, uh, particularly on an iPad, so I have that disabled. I think these options are generally the same as they've, they've always been, um, or that they've been for a good while in terms of animation, transition animations, page on enter, page on exit, and a brightness control slider here. Options to manage the letterboxing, to either have it, don't have it, make it black, make it uh, letterbox according to the color of the book, and then some layout options, which affects landscape. So let's take a look at that. One of the great things that I've always found about Comixology, that I've always preferred and liked about Comixology, is it's one of the only readers that lets you have a two-page landscape spread. DC Universe, at least the last that I've used it, it has been a little bit, but did not allow for that. Marvel Unlimited does not allow for that. And on a bigger screen, particularly when you were reading Comixology on the web or on something like a 12.9 inch iPad, being able to do two page landscape is really, really nice. I think I actually prefer to read that way on a 12.9. On the 11 inch, I tend to read in portrait and then I will flip landscape uh, with, if the specific page is a forced two page, I don't, you, I don't normally read like this um, for single pages, two by two, but I love having the option. And again, it makes a lot of sense for web, maybe a 12.9 iPad or a bigger screen. So there is an option to control some of this navigation. Right now I have it set to basically scroll the two pages at a time. If I tap in for the options and I change the layout, I can get a vertical scroll 
in a landscape view. So this is a single page. It allows you to just vertically go through the book, kind of like how Marvel Unlimited does their new infinite comics to some degree. Anybody like this? If you do, I'm curious, leave it in the comments. I don't think this is for me. I would not use this type of a setting at all. I don't like that. If I'm doing landscape, I'm doing this two pages. But again, on an 11 inch iPad, I'm usually reading in portrait and then I'll flip when the time comes to a landscape page. All right, so if we take a look at the Discover, it's basically kind of a pseudo version of the Amazon webpage, but dedicated to comics. We have a home page giving some options for featured, uh, new releases, trending, some recommendations and such that you might like. We have an ability to see new stuff, which is really, which is really new books from a variety of different categories and such. And I can scroll across these. If I click into one, again, these these information pages are really very much the same for every book. I can look at a series, but again, you can't buy anything. I, I don't know. I find that it's only so useful to even have this on the device. I can go to Comicsology Unlimited. So we see here, as a Prime member, you can read some books for free. Look for the Prime Reading logo. I haven't tried this. Let's see. I can. Read for free. This book will automatically appear in your library for you to read. So that's cool. At least you can check out Prime Reading and Comixology Unlimited books. So you do need to go to the webpage if you want to purchase. You don't need to come to the webpage for things that you want to check out. And if I go to my recent... Now, that book should be at the very top. Interestingly, I have this prime reading banner showing me that, oh, there was a prime reading uh, prime reading book in there. There's the bug, no cover. Scroll up, scroll down. There's my cover back again. I don't think it downloaded by default. No, nope. so we'd have to click to download. Now, they did have the ability to read while downloading, so as soon as we get ready to open, we can go ahead and pop the book, and we're reading. I think when we're done we would return book. Return to prime reading. When you return a book, it will be removed from your library. Return, there it goes, goodbye. And that's how the, the lending services work. So pretty nice. I think if you're, I guess as an extra bonus option for an Amazon Prime membership that you might already have. And again, I don't think Comixology Unlimited is really a bad deal. Even if you buy books, it's only a couple bucks a month, six bucks a month, and then you get like 10, 15% off comics you purchase from given publishers. So if you're using Comicology as your platform of choice and you subscribe to Unlimited and you're reading any, even really a small volume of books every month and buying stuff, you're probably saving more to pay the six bucks for Com Com Comicsology Unlimited than not having Comicsology Unlimited and then not having the discount. And there's quite a bit of stuff in there. There's a lot more in Comicsology Unlimited than there is in Prime Reading. So that's it. That is Comixology 4.0. Missing a lot of stuff. Book quality took a nosedive. Uh, but there are some nice uh, new features and enhancements. I, I wonder if at some point in time this is going to go away. Maybe in a few years or whatnot. This is kind of limping along the, the Comixology brand. And eventually we may just see everything fully and wholly and only folded into Kindle. We'll see. Maybe not. Maybe this Maybe this will stick around. Maybe some of the missing features will come back. But I would really, really like to see a statement or some confirmation or whatever about the book quality. And I have a whole host of other thoughts about, about this transition. I'm going to kind of do a, an overview video of, of that and give some more of my thoughts on it in terms of what's being lost, what I think maybe my future for digital comic book reading is and Share some thoughts in the comments. Let me know what else you might like to see about digital comics in general. As always, please like and subscribe. Look down in the description below for ways to support the channel. And thanks so much for watching.